Hello and welcome back to Wireman's Whimsy. Today we're going to make gift tags. Uh, usually I do cards or, or something slightly uh, different, but mostly cards. But today we're going to do some gift tags. I have used the greetings from the Encircled and Warmth uh, set. You can absolutely use this with your Encircled in Beauty dies for sure. But I chose to use the Stitch So Sweetly dies for this project this morning. And the uh, Evergreen Bows, you see, is the bow from Evergreen Elegance. So it's two stamp sets, uh, but mostly the greetings from the Encircled in Warmth set. So these are the three that we're going to make in the uh, video today. And I've used Simply Elegant Trim to do the uh, ties for them. But before we get into that, I wanted to show you kind of the next level up. These ones I made by heat embossing. Same stamps, same design, um, just heat embossing with um, the gold powder and then the silver powder. I'm putting on the foil silver backgrounds with, in this case, the silver uh, Simply Elegant trim. You get two spools of trim in the package, one silver, one gold. Um, and then I just loaded them up and these ones I did bling up a little bit um, if you're gonna put the bling on you need to write the tag first and then go back and put the bling on you can write on the back but if you've got the bling on the front it can make writing on the back really bumpy so um, again I used the greetings um, and I mixed and matched I used silver and gold um, embossing on these because sometimes you have gold in your wrap sometimes you have silver so it's nice to be able to mix and match them both and this one I used the champagne rhinestones they're a slightly different color they're a little bit more orangey but I really like the way they look on that one and these ones are just basic rhinestones so let's get started building the projects um, so I've got my three greeting stamps and I've got my bow stamp. The bow is done in granny apple green. The greetings are all done in real red. Uh, my paper, I cut a bunch of blanks out of basic white that are four and a quarter by three. Uh, so I cut a whole whack of them out so that I could um, do these. And I based my size on this stamp. How long is it? And being able to have enough space to actually cut them out. So I'll leave that there so that you know what size they are. And then I've done the backgrounds all out of Granny Apple Green. So we will start with, I'm just looking for all my things that I set out. This one is for this set. And this one is for this set. And then I need a blank and I need a piece of granny apple green for this one. And there's my granny apple green spare pieces. I thought I had prepped all this. Well, you'll get to see me prep the work on this one too. So I'm just going to grab my paper trimmer. I'm going to put it just off to the side so I can cut a piece of paper out the right size to do this one. So I'm just going to cut that off. And have I got it the right size? I have indeed got it the right size. Excellent. Okay, so let's get going. I've already stamped this one because when you do this one, um, you can actually fit two on the one blank. So this one's already done. So let's go ahead and cut that one out. We're going to use the smaller of the two layering dies and we're just going to run it through the cut and emboss. And I'm going to use uh, sticky notes just to hold it in place because I do want it to cut accurately on this one. And we do all the greeting stamping and cutting. And then we come back in with the bow stamp and do that stamping afterwards. Just because it's easier once they're cut out to kind of know where we want to put the bows. So we'll cut, we've cut that one out now. And... We'll set that just off to the side because we're, we're a bit finished with that one and we're finished with that one too. So I'm going to pull out my real red and I am going to do my warm Christmas wishes 
I'm going to ink it up really, really well. And because I just did my samples, I know that this stamp is well inked. Uh, this pad is very inky. So there's my warm Christmas wishes. I'm just going to put that off to the side. And now I need another blank. And my wishing you love, joy, and happiness this coming year. So we're going to just stamp this in the middle like that. Okay, so we're done with the red ink, the real red, and that stamping. So now I can cut these out and I'm gonna cut them out both at once. And because I'm using a, a, a die with a strong edge on it, I'm actually going to put it in at an angle, line it up like that. And then I'm going to use a sticky note to hold it down. And then I'm going to come back in again. And this one has a, sh a kind of a edge in a corner. So I am gonna put this one through at an angle as well. I'm just gonna line that up the way I want it. And then I'm going to put a sticky note on it to hold it in place. I'll sandwich it up and then I'll run it through. And then we'll do the second round of stamping with the evergreen bow. And we can cut out the pieces for the background. So I'm just gonna run that through and there we go. Excellent. So I'll just pop those off, put this back over here because we're going to need that again. So take these off and I already have the granny apple green blank for this one cut out I just need to cut out the granny apple green blank for this one so why don't I go ahead and do that and then we can just stamp and build so I'm going to take my larger of the two um, stitch so sweetly rectangles and I'm just going to run it through again at an angle on my uh, cutting mats here. I'll run that through and then we'll do the rest of the stamping and we'll build the cards. So again, the blanks that I've used to make these are four and a quarter by three. So I took an eight and a half by 11 sheet and I cut it straight down the middle at four and a quarter. And then I subcut uh, the two lengths into the um, three inch pieces. It just seemed to work really well uh, for these ones. All right, so I need to come in these and do all of my bows. So you can see that there's different edges here and I tried to fit the edges around the greetings as much as possible. And when you're putting it down, you've got a little bit of wiggle room. So when you put it down, you can actually overlap, overlap you're stamping just a little bit because you've got that little bit of an edge. So instead of having lots of white space around your greeting, you can actually kind of overlap it. So let's get started with this. I'm going to ink up my bows here. And here you can see there's a nice sweep in there. So that's where I'm going to stamp there. So it comes right in around the lettering. Ink it up again and use that same kind of curved spot, overlap the C just a little bit and come in and there we've got our bows coming right into the greeting. This one, um, I used this little bit here to come right in over the N, the end here, and then come back in using that same piece of the stamp around the S, just like that. And then with this one, um, it's the, uh, the tag is actually wider than the stamp. So I just kind of placed it as centrally as possible. And the greenery comes back up into the letters a little bit, but again, you don't have that big white space that makes it look like you kind of missed a little bit. So there we go. That is the stamping done. Let's put that over the way. And I'll close up the ink pad, because you know my rule, if it's open, I'll put my fingers in it. Uh, so that one goes there. This one goes here, and this one goes here. So I'm just gonna move all my bits and pieces out of the way so that I can load these up. So I'm just literally going to attach these. They're not dimensionalized, again, because you need to write on the back of these. 
Uh, so you need it to be as smooth as possible on the back. And to make the holes, I've got a variety of different size hole punches and things like that. Um, if you've got a piercing tool, you can make the hole with the piercing tool. Uh, you can make it bigger. Um, I also have, I've used it before, I have this old um, retired punch that makes a little slot. So if you're using ribbon instead of twine or the uh, elegant trim, uh, you can make a, a wider spot. So, and this overlaps the stitching uh, in the in the die a little bit, but there we go. And all I did is I took, like I say, I've got to this hole punch. Uh, it's a very, it's a small hole punch. You can use a regular hole punch as well, whatever you've got. I'm just going to punch a hole in the end like that. Come into this one on the end. I'm just lining it up and punching the hole. And this one, I don't know why for some reason I wanted to do this one up on the corner. So I've been punching that one up in the corner. And I'm going to use gold trim on these ones. I cut a piece, I don't know how long this is, eh, nine, 10 inches long. And I'm just folding it in half. And I'm feeding the loop through the hole from front to back. And then bringing the loop around and pulling the ends through so that you've got that straight edge here. It's not the open edge. If you prefer the open side, that's fine. You can obviously do whatever you like. These are just guidelines, but I've done it that way. Um, and these ones I used the gold one on because the gold is warm and I liked the warmth of the red. So uh, if you chose to do this in softer colors, like uh, maybe Blushing Bride and or uh, Balmy Blue, you could use the silver to accentuate. But these ones I chose to go with the more traditional Christmas colors. And there it is. I'm like, I knew I had another one. There we go. So you can do this very simply. You can bling it up. Um, I quite like the, uh, the embossed ones. Um, embossing is noisy on the videos. Um, and these ones, uh, just die cutting and a little bit of stamping. They are simple. They are beautiful. They are quick to make. Uh, and you can make a whole bunch up. And you can, you can have your kids help if you want. They can run the die cutting machine. They can do some stamping. But that is our project for today. So thank you so much for watching. And let's create together again soon.